wired up here. Hope this doesn't get in my way. All right, so good afternoon. My name is Ellen Murphy, and my big idea is about memory, especially the memory of elders, and how we can use the power of art and music to help elders remember and to hold on to their sense of self. It's also about the even greater power of emotional connection. Now, you might have noticed that I have some gray hairs myself and I'm moving towards elderhood. So, I may forget some of what I'm about to say. <laughs> and I hope you'll bear with me and we can use those moments up to uh, have some personal connection. I also brought my own personal prompter who's sitting up here to help me, help me out if I happen to, to lose track too much. All right, so I wonder how many of you have thought how nice it would be to have a photographic memory. I mean, really, wouldn't it be great, especially when exam time rolls around? But the fact is, only a tiny fraction of people have a true photographic memory. The vast majority of us have brains that latch on to some memories while consigning most to the trash heap. We get frustrated when we can't remember what we want to remember, and then we get ambushed by inane, random memories that just emerge like, like commercial jingles from our childhood. As writer Austin O'Malley says, there it is, already up there, memory is a crazy person who hoards colored rags and throws away food. trying to get it to go away now. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. Most of us don't understand what memories really are. We believe that a memory is a fixed representation of something that happened in the past. We think that we carry our memories around with us in our brains in a sort of, like, in a sort of mental file cabinet. We have a sense of having them. We possess them as if we could call on them, trotting them out one by one to look at them, as if they were diary entries that had remained unchanged ever since we first wrote them. But this is all wrong. It turns out that memory has far more to do with imagination than we'd like to think. As Charles Ferdinand says in his book, Pieces of Light, the past is a story that we tell ourselves. Our memories are not possessions, but mental constructions that we create as we are remembering them, uh, involving many different neurons throughout the hippocampus region of our brains. Okay? So they're mental constructions. They are built in the here and now, not retrieve whole from the past. And every time we remember something, we reconstruct it from its various parts, and not always in the same way. Not only that, we unconsciously bias our memories with emotions and information that we acquire after the event that we're remembering. So in this way, our memories are really not very reliable. Even so, it's hard to imagine ourselves without them. Who would we be without our memories? For most of us, our memories are a core part of, who we, of our identity. Without our memories, would we even have any sense of self at all? These are questions that I began asking about memory once my mother began losing hers. First, it was just short-term memories, but then it grew into longer-term memories, like remembering her childhood on the fruit farm in New Jersey where she grew up, memories of her three sisters, even memories of her parents started to go. When I visited her, she described to me what it was like to be gradually losing her memories. It's like I'm on a small island in the midst of a sea, she said, and there's a fog bank rolling in. I used to be able to see all the way out to the horizon, 
But now the fog keeps coming closer and closer, and I can see only a little way ahead. And that little way ahead keeps shrinking and shrinking. Hearing this helped me understand what the experience of losing her memory was like for my mom, but it also made me feel helpless. I wanted to be able to stand on the shore of that little island with her and somehow blow the fog back, at least for a moment. But I had no idea that this was possible. A few months later, my mother died. That was when I began to really learn more and read more about how memory works and doesn't work. I wish, thank you my prompter, I wish I had known earlier what I have since learned about how art and music can reach into and revitalize elders with memory loss. The effect can be almost miraculous. So most care centers in the United States for people with Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia operate on a medical model. The medical model focuses on the person's deficits and tries to fix them, usually with medications. Now, there are some medications that help slow memory loss, but there is no medication yet developed that actually reverses the process of forgetting. When you go into these facilities for people with Alzheimer's and long-term dementia, what you often see is people just sitting day after day hour after hour passively sitting with little or no agency in their lives. Their only interactions with people who are paid to take care of their physical needs. It's easy to see how in this situation a person could begin to lose their sense of who they are. But a new model of dementia care is emerging, a much more positive model that instead of focusing on a person's deficits, focuses on what they're already doing and tries to build on that through participation in creative arts. Creative arts because the creative arts draw on parts of the brain that are still relatively intact in most people with dementia. The big idea in this approach is to use the arts to engage and connect with people. It's based on the idea that no matter how many memories they've lost, an essential piece of who they always were still remains. Since memory turns out to be as much about imagination as about exact factual recall, it makes sense that the creative arts can be an avenue for recovering memories. Music, <laughs> music classes, where in which elders are encouraged to sing and play instruments. Drama, storytelling, painting, poetry, these are all modalities that draw on parts of the brain that are least impaired in people with dementia. Research, an increasing body of research, has shown, in fact, that elders who participate in arts activities experience less stress, more energy, they're happier, they feel more connected to the world, and they have an overall better quality of life. I wish I had known about this research when my mother was still alive. She had always been an unusually creative and imaginative person. And I think if I had tried to engage her with clay or paint, both mediums that she had worked in when she was younger, I think it would have energized her and maybe brought back some of her memories. Listening to music is an especially, can be especially beneficial to people with dementia, even to people who have extremely advanced dementia. Many of you may have seen or may be familiar with this video that I'm about to show. Q and Q, thank you. Um, about a man named Henry. Notice what happens to Henry when he first hears the music. We first see Henry inert, maybe depressed, unresponsive, and almost unalive. 
and the chance to have some real agency in their lives. Um, Okay, yes, and the chance to have some real agency in their lives. So yeah, this kind of intense connection that allowed the elders to feel more deeply seen, known, and loved is what the Course ended up really being about, more than, much more than about retrieving specific memories. And it's this kind of intense emotional connection that I've come to believe is even more important to our sense of self than our memories are. I still wish that I had thought to engage my mom in some kind of um, clay work or painting or have her listen to the music of her youth in her last years. I, who knows how it might have blown the fog back a little bit from her island, what might have opened in her, what memories might have come into clearer focus. But I'm very grateful that for, for the strong connection that we had together to the end. And as I walk around, oops, what's that doing there? I don't know, there we go. Out of order, but that's okay. And as I walk around the activity room, the activities room at Fairview, watching my students, here we go, watching my students singing with their partners, making art, comforting and cheering each other on. I thank my mother for the big idea that has come to life in this course. Thank you very much. I have a few more pictures just to show. Yeah, thank you. some of these pictures, the kind of connections that students are making with their partners. They really become like family members. And many students continue to visit with their partners after the semester is over and to correspond with them. Thank you very much.